Welcome to text-based adventure. You find yourself in a dark and mysterious room with a single door. What will you do? Hi, I'm Sam. Here's another behind the scenes look at the OpenAI for Unity course that I'm working on that will launch sometime soon, still, still figuring that out. The idea of the course is to give an overview and the theory of what AI is in gaming, what you can do with OpenAI's tools, the ones we've heard about for the last year, ChatGPT being a leading one, and DALI for image generation. And what I wanted to do in the course is bring that theory into one sample project that I'll show how I created it, how I conceived it, and um, at runtime, how I use those APIs to build out the experience. So in the last video, I talked a bit about early days and bringing some of this technology together. Here, the proof of concept is done. The game is not complete yet, but the look and the feel and the features are pretty locked in at this point. I'll probably add more settings, for example. So there's two phases I'm gonna show here. I'm not gonna dig into the code. This is just a teaser for kind of what to expect. But my idea was to code from scratch, myself, a Unity game that at runtime gets flavor text and flavor images to tell the story uh, from ChatGPT. I am a ChatGPT Plus subscriber. That is not actually needed, I think, to get to unlock the features that I wanted to use here. I did it just to be able to play with GPT-4. What I'm showing here is GPT-3.5, and it works great. So if you're going to be able to play the course, plug in your own free token, and build on top of this or understand how it works at runtime, it's totally free. So here's the idea. It's a throwback to the text-based adventure games from the 70s and 80s. Uh, we've even seen a resurgence of those types of gameplay recently. I played a ton of them, and I'm going to talk about those ones that are kind of historic classics as well as kind of modern reimaginings in the course. Then talk about the theory of AI and how AI is all over gaming, even before the boom we're seeing now. AI has tons of places in gaming. Uh, and then show how I created this particular game and include the source code. So here what you're able to do is choose the spoken language. I'm just hard coding a short list. Choose your own genre, being able to pick, let's say, uh, science fiction is a very popular one, but I'll choose, I'll choose drama, and then a tone within that genre. So being able to pick different kind of moods, let's say. I'll pick a mysterious drama that is gonna be five chapters long. Now, what I do with these is I created my own framework for creating a game of any genre on top of ChatGPT, and that framework is deployed as a Unity package, and I pull it into this project. So if you wanted to create a completely different look and feel to the game, making it 3D, you'd still be able to use some of the technology here that uh, I've templated out. It was a huge learning experience for me to uh, interact with this, and I had a lot of aha moments during the development of this where I could lean on the technology to actually help me create the course. So let's just take a look at this here. With these settings, I'll go back and I'll play the game. Now, disappointingly, I currently have 10 second wait between each of the chapters. And when the chapter comes, the text, the images, and the spoken voice you're about Welcome to, to text-based adventure. You find yourself in a dark and mysterious room with a single door. What will you do? So I allowed the text to speak there, but the, the images, the complete story text, the stats management, the chapter-driven approach to the story, the options at the bottom, these are all given to us from the ChatGPT. So ChatGPT has a concept of a prompt, which is what you're asking for, and then it sends back different options that you're able to use. I uh, have it format the responses in XML so that I'm able to get at that data more easily. For example, populating those three buttons at the bottom. The voice, the, um, sorry, the voice to text is part of OpenAI, but I'm not using that feature. I went and got a different API for text to voice. 
so that I can have the words that you're seeing there spoken out with a robotic voice. My plan is to mix up which voices are used and have those be in settings. Right now, it's just the, the vanilla boilerplate voice. So let's follow along here. You're in this room. You see some candles according to the picture. Dark and mysterious. What do we want to do? I'll search the room. Search the room. Again, here we've got this weight. I'm not sure what I can do about the weight. I thought maybe being a plus member would have sped it up. You search the room and find a small key hidden in a drawer. What will you do? Now I'm having the text slowly type itself out. I'm still working on that. I think it's a little slow right here. I'm trying to time it with the voice. But let's see, so here we've got some kind of a drawer that we can get into. Let's try the key on there. Try the key on the door. You search the room and find a small key hidden under a loose floorboard. You notice the keyhole in the door and decide to try the key. It turns with a satisfying click and the door creaks open. You step into a long hallway with doors on either side. Now overall I'm super happy with the progress of the game. Some things just to give some explanation on thoughts here. The idea is that those stats that you have would be integrated into the gameplay and that the choices that you make would directly spend or buff those stats up. I have not quite integrated that um, as well yet. Occasionally, the, the body text there will say something like, because you have a charisma of six, you were able to do this and that. But I want to tune that a bit more. One of the challenges that I found is it's not like you're calling a backend server in the traditional sense where you create the exact return. There's a randomness and a freshness to the results that are returned, and I'm still learning the fine art of creating these prompts so that I get a consistent result. For example, I don't want to have every single body text say something about the stats. I want it to happen every once in a while, so just getting that rhythm right uh, is part of what I'm up to. I'll do one more and then I'll end it. I'm also going to show the response while this is waiting. Go right. Sorry, not the response. I'm going to show my request. So here is the full text, which is quite tiny, but just to see the breadth of it. You search the room and find a key hidden under a loose brick. You try the key on the door, and it opens with a creak. You find yourself in a long hallway with doors on either side. Which way will you go? You can see how super cool that is to be able to both design with AI in mind and then have it actually do the gameplay. You know, it's offering those choices to the user and deciding what logic makes sense based on the, the original prompts that I gave it. Super cool. I wanted to talk about two courses that I have that are already out and available, so you can check them out while waiting for the open AI course. One is a physics course for Unity 2022, and it covers everything from Unity 2D physics, 3D physics, and C-sharp physics entry points. It's specifically designed for beginners and intermediates in the Unity space, but users of all levels, if you're already deeply experienced in Unity, but haven't broken into the physics features, it's a great way to get started. There's two complete sample projects, which I go over. One is 2D, like Angry Birds, and one is 3D, like Marble Madness. The other course I have is fit for intermediate advanced users. If you've had game projects that become overwhelming with this organization due to spaghetti code that creeps up, or just a lack of general structure that makes it difficult for you to work on it, for you to collaborate with coworkers, or for you to have a long shelf life to your project, coming back to it months later. Looking at dividing your project up into the MVC framework, I actually call it MVCS in this case, because we have a model that stores your data, a view, which is the visuals rendered to the screen, capturing input, etc. The controller, that's all the game logic. So in the case of our AI game, we would use the controller to listen to different clicks, 
and then in the S, the service layer, be able to call backend REST services and other backend endpoints like OpenAI. So the MVC course here was created without AI in mind, but you could apply it to any type of Unity project from an app to a game, 2D, 3D, specifically projects where you have more robust goals in scaling it up, scaling your team, or working with different views into the data. So imagine a game where you have a map, a game where you have a character walking around in an environment, and that same game has inventory management. Those are all different views into the same data structure, and this is an ideal way to organize that type of project. So you can take a look at the link below to see a trailer for the course, as well as to buy the course and get started today. Thanks very much.